When you're the cut man, you can't get offended easily. You have to take people's criticism lightly and you have to just fix whatever it is that they need fixed and then move on with the day. If you're easily offended, you're gonna make mistakes when you're cutting. You're not gonna make a good cut man if every time someone hands you something back, you get all mad and storm off. So you gotta take it lightly and you gotta just keep trucking when you're the cut man. All right, so I'm the cut man today, and I actually really like being the cut man. I think it's a fun job. I play a couple of games. Number one, I try to stay ahead of my guys and keep them running, and that way nobody's sitting still. So if you're the cut man, you can set pace. Number two is I try to use every little piece of this material, and so these are 16-foot boards. Obviously, if you have a cutoff, you try to use it up somewhere. You must see the board, be the board, visualize where the board is going. If you don't, you end up with a bunch of cutoffs that are long in your scrap pile, and that is just money down the drain. So that's a great game, and any good cut man plays that game where you try to use as much of the material as you can. Have you ever walked up on a job where you see whole two by fours in the dumpster? I have, and I'm like, wow, who's paying for this wood? This must be cost plus. That's the only reason I can think of. But still, even then, if the homeowner wants to come by and see whole two by fours chunked in the dumpster, that can't happen. All right, here's where we're working and here's our material stack and here's our cut station. So I just wanted to have a look at that as far as efficiency goes. I'm grabbing material, cutting it, priming it, handing it straight there. So you're set up as far as where your material is and where your cut station is. Let's go cut guy. All right, one other quick note about the cut station is you can see we have a sea of saw horses that are all the same height, set on level ground so that our work material is not sagging off the ends. When we cut it, it stays in place and that just makes things a lot easier and a lot faster. So I would recommend that if you got a bunch of sawhorses, just set them up. So when you're the cut man, you also have to be listening because people are gonna be yelling numbers at you like crazy. Not a good idea to be having loud music on. I've had cut men, they're like, oh, let's blast some music, let's have fun. I'm like, well, you can't hear me. <laughs> I'm yelling numbers and you're oblivious. So that's no good. Uh, we've used walkie-talkies if, say, we've got an install going around the building or up on a roof where you can't yell at the cut man easy. So being a cut man is a listening job. It's tough. All right, let's talk about one of the most important things, knowing which side of the board you're keeping and which side of the line you're cutting, okay? Your saw blade actually takes out about an eighth inch of material. It's called the kerf. Now, if you cut on this side of the line, the keep side, your board will be an eighth inch shorter than you expected, okay? And that's why you'll cut usually on the waist side with the blade, and that will give you the correct number when you cut this and you get your keep piece. Your cut piece will take the kerf. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> All right, for siding, I usually just make a tick mark at the bottom edge of the board, like so. All right, this is important, and I'm not gonna demonstrate because it's dangerous, but never cut your board in the middle between two saw horses. It'll do like this and pinch the saw blade and your saw kick out of there and nearly kill you every time. So cut off the ends, the unsupported part, that's okay. All right, now we're gonna get super deep into this, but let's do it. Pretty much every job site has a different lingo, let's call it, when it comes to calling out measurements, okay? Our job site is different than the one down the road, than the next one down the road. And I'm not sure why, but almost all job sites I've worked on, if you call out a measurement in a certain way, sometimes people don't know what you mean. It's just what you're used to. So on our job site, we'll call out um, long and short, meaning a 16th long and a 16th short of whatever the number is. And so you need to find out what long means, okay? Some job sites might say three quarters plus, what does that mean? You gotta ask them what they mean the first cut so you don't cut like 10 boards wrong to start with. So I worked with Arlo for a long time and Arlo's a really good cut man. Uh, he and I established a long time ago that heavy or light meant half of a 16th. I've had other people where heavy was a 16th or light was a 16th and they only knew their eighths. So you gotta watch out for that too. I had a guy cut for me one time and he was gone for about five minutes and came back and asked me what each of the 16ths meant. 
So about five minutes explaining that, I think I blew his mind. One very common way people yell out measurements is by just saying the 16th. So they'll say 26 and three, and that means 26 and three sixteenths, or 45 and five, and that means 45 inches, five sixteenths. All right, I'm still talking. There's more to say though. I gotta say it. When you're the cut man, you need to know the value and the quantity of the material that you're working with. For instance, if you're working with a high value material that you have a low quantity of, you need to be very careful. If you're cutting cherry trim, you only have one piece that's long enough that'll work. You need to measure that thing like four or five times before you cut it. Just to triple check that you're not gonna mess up the one piece that will work, okay? And it's expensive, that's good to know. You don't wanna waste money, okay? If you have tons of pieces of siding like we had today, then you can just cut haphazardly. You cut as fast as you can measure and cut. If you cut one wrong, no big deal, just grab another. You use the piece that you cut wrong somewhere else, no problem. So know the value and the quantities of the material that you're working with when you're the cut man. Let's talk about saws for a second because today I'm cutting some siding right there. It's 16 feet long and it's pretty thin, easy to cut through. So I'm using a cordless saw. And I've seen people on our comments say, man, just get a corded saw. Well, when you're cutting long stock like this and you have to cut both ends sometimes, it's really nice to just move all around without getting tangled up in your cord. And really a battery saw has plenty of power. I've cut for like four hours straight on one battery nonstop. So the corded saw is great if you're gonna be cutting through really thick, heavy pressure treated or two by or other stuff like that. But really for the siding, a cordless saw is really nice because you can just move around. All right, and may as well just go here. When people give you a notch, notch out of a board, uh, sometimes they'll give you the amount of material that needs to be removed. Sometimes they'll give you the amount of material that needs to stay. And if they don't tell you which one of these they've told you, you need to ask them so that you know, are you removing the amount of material they told you or leaving, okay? Because this can get confusing and sometimes can even flip back and forth depending on how they had to measure. All right, <laughs> how could I still have more to say about this? I don't know. Well. Let me talk about the most common mistake when you're a cut man is called the inch monster, okay? That's when you cut a board exactly wrong. Like you cut the 16th increment right, but you measure a whole inch long or a whole inch short. And this happens all the time. So if someone yells at you, you inch monstered it, that means you cut it exactly, but an inch wrong. All right, thanks for watching our video. That wasn't everything about being a cut man, but that should be enough to get you really excited about being one anyway. Finally, this video is ending because I'm going home. That's it. I could have kept talking, but thankfully it was five o'clock and uh, you made it through the whole thing. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to our channel. And if you click the bell, you'll get our future videos. See ya.